Hey guys, Omni here. We are finally back for episode 12 of Superman and Lois. Um, the last episode that we left off on, we saw some glimpses into Clark's past and to his rise of becoming Superman, his early days, what makes him tick behind the scenes, and it all turned out to be Morgan Edge using Kryptonian technology to scan his brain to learn about his brother to try to persuade him to join their side. In the end, it doesn't really work in that way, so he turns to his last-ditch resort, threatening his family. A weakened Clark can't fight back in this moment and decides to go along with Morgan Edge's plans, for now at least, to spare his family. Where that's going to go from here, who knows. We saw at the end of the episode that Lois ended up finally picking up the phone and calling John Henry to come in because what he had predicted is now starting to happen. So I imagine the next few episodes are going to be preparing for this eventual battle of multiple Kryptonians against super, an evil Superman and Morgan Edge. So the working theories we have so far is uh, that they're going to be instilling another consciousness into him using the Eradicator, possibly even Theta Rho, Morgan Edge's father, to take over and give him a new body. Could be somebody else. Some people have mentioned, what about Zod? I would just be like, can we just leave Zod out of it for a little while? Zod's been like the go-to Kryptonian guy for so long. I like that they actually kind of came up with their own and tied it personally into Clark um, with Talro here. I, I, I like what they've been doing with that so far. Um, or they're just using it to alter his personality through pain because that's kind of how it was set up in the flashback because we got, along with the, a majority of the, the flashbacks last episode were tied to Clark. We did have some more of some flashbacks about Morgan Edge's origin here on the planet, as well as his establishment of his own uh, Fortress of Solitude. So I'm excited to see where it goes. So this episode is titled Through the Valley, or what was it? Yeah, Through the Valley of Death. So guys, without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into this one. I know we got, I'm excited to see a special guest appearance we saw in the promo from last uh, last episode when we watched it. So we'll see how that whole thing ties in. Um, after the fact, if you guys might be out of loop, so not a lot of people watching this are not watching any of the other shows. So I'll fill you in on where that's going, depending on where this lands in the continuity. So we'll just kind of figure things out from there. But guys, full unedited reaction watch along is over on Patreon, or if you become a member here on the channel, both get you access to the same content. You can watch this all the way through and see my uncut reaction. Uh, I got this, all the other shows we've been covering here on the channel this year, as well as a bunch of movies I've been adding up there. Uh, most recently, Fear Street Part 2, I dropped on there. Um, but guys, it helps support the channel. But that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into this long-awaited return of this fantastic show. Here we go. Uh-oh. Lois. John, it's happening. Just like you said it would. Mmm. Fight as long as you can, but eventually... You will fade as this new mind comes to light. Yeah. Not even Superman is strong enough to resist the will of Zod. Oh, it is Zod. God damn it. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well, we'll roll with it. I'm surprised it's not his, his dad that's going in there. But yeah, they are trying to subject him to a new consciousness. Jordan, listen. When Dad was attacked by John Irons, you heard him, and then we found where he was. Yeah, they were a couple miles away. So? So Dad could be anywhere in the entire world. Listen to me, this is just like punching that training log in the cellar, okay? It's just like it. You could do it, but you had to believe you could do it. You Jonathan's do like too. his coach. You can do this. Come on. I fucking love these two, man. Oh, look who it is! John, you know better than anyone what's at risk here. I do which is why we need your help to come up with a rescue plan. A rescue plan? If he signaled you to bring me in, he knows the likelihood is there is only one hope. I need to put him down by any means necessary. Mm. God damn it. We're not killing Superman. That's not why I called you. You've said it yourself. You got to tell him who he is. You got to tell him why. It would be a tactical error to rule out a rescue. No, a tactical error? <laughs> we need to let this earth fall the way that mine did. 
It took him seven minutes to wipe out Metropolis. He won't be turned. He will eventually. No, he won't, and I will prove it. Lois. Just figure out how to find him. It's got to come out, Sales this connection. Doesn't know this, but I'm rounding up every weapon I got in Project 7734's arsenal for when the time comes. I mean, can't blame him, man. Hmm. How far can you hear? Well, I don't know. Somewhere in Australia? Australia? Well, or New Zealand. I can't tell the accents apart. <laughs> can't blame him. You're good enough. Really? Because that didn't stop Edge. I gave him everything. I had everything. And he just... He just, he just tossed me around like a rag doll. You can do something now. You can do something now, okay? Just focus, okay? What is this? State-of-the-art rocket power projectile. It's designed to completely deplete a Kryptonian's power. For how long? Long enough to kill them. You made this thing? <sighs> well, that's okay. And it worked? Oh! Fighting the plan was to draw him deep in the space. Before I saw if it worked. Portal. Okay. I ended up here. So you don't know if it worked. It would have worked, Sam. If we were to end this once and for all. His Superman could still be out there and in his world. Get someone to produce me one of these, and I'll take care of the rest. Mm, damn. What triggered the portal? Is what I want to know, because it seems to just be luck. Let go. <laughs> yeah, almost did. But you did fight, Kyle. Won't be long now, Father. Hmm. Ah. Oh. Jordan! Ah. <laughs> oh. Stupid commercials. Dad, Jordan, where are you? The Badlands. Hmm. I think your boy can help you. He's still alive. We need to go. We need to go right okay. now. Okay. Alert some people. Don't just go. Yes. Yes, sir. John Diggle? What are you doing here? Is Argus helping with the search? I assumed you knew. Your father called Lila, needed some tech deliver, so she sent me. What kind of tech? Oh, tech for that missile. I thought you were on my side. Lois, it's just a precaution. No decisions have been made. Except the part where you lied about what you're using this Argus tech for. I didn't want to involve you and Lila in the decision making. Because you knew we would say no, Sam. You can't try to kill Superman. You sure as hell can't use Argus Tech to do it. The tech is mine. I'm sorry, who the hell are you? This is John Henry Irons. He's helping us coordinate a fallback plan if we run out of time. Which looks more and more likely. Are you really going to gamble on the fate of your world? Wait, wait. You're from another Earth? <laughs> yeah, he is. You and I are going to have a serious conversation about this, General. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the word's getting out. Multiverse is still around. I know how much Superman loves humanity. He said he's not just something I report on. He is everything to me. He is the love of my life. The father of my sons. <laughs> the look on his face. This doesn't change anything. How can you say that? He loves his sons. He loves me. That matters. What about all the other sons? that'll be killed when he attacks he wanted you to call me because he knew what i would do i need you to believe the possibility that there's hope if that's what you need then you called the wrong guy john no lois everything you were saying is just getting in the way of what needs to be done but you were right about one thing lois i will not hesitate i'm sorry lois mm. 
payment. Doppelgangers, other worlds, glowing boxes, losing the people I love. I'm done with that life. Unfortunately, we don't have the luxury of letting this one just play itself out. Come on, he's Superman. I fought beside him. He's the best we have. Oliver would have said that. Hell, they all would have. This is not an easy decision for me to make. What? Exhausting every option to save the life of an ally. A hero? I can't imagine the courage it took for you to survive whatever the hell it was that got you here, but you're gonna need that courage today. War will be praying you made the right call. Zod, damn it. <laughs> Zoom in. That's it. I want a final systems check. Make sure my full arsenal's locked. We got three more episodes after this, so, like, this can't be it. Obviously. I would imagine so. I saw, I saw what happened to my mom. I saw how my dad was. I saw a lot about you, too. I saw about your daughter. She seemed like a really good dad. I just fucking you know. This guy here about to kill. He's a really good dad, too. I wish there was another way, son. There's always another way. Arrived on side. Man, I need him to have the S on his armor and a cape. There's no sign of... All right, Doom guy, let's do it. Superman? Mmm, fuck. I can't find him. He's not down. So Lemon Tree shows his rivals are fine. Got him. But he's not in the Badlands anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Jesus. John, talk to me. None of you can stop this. I'm sure. No, Dad, wait. He's gotta fire that missile or he's dead. That solar missile's only good for one shot. If he wastes it, we have nothing to use against Edge. John's gotta get through to him or they're both dead. That's a fair point. Right. You can't beat him. You have to make him remember who he is. <laughs> John, he's still in there. John, please. <laughs> Back in the side. Lois sent me to help you. She still believes in you. I met your boys. And they believe in you too. That pain you feel right now, that is nothing compared to what happens if you lose them. Right now, you got a chance to fight. Do not let that bastard take you away from your family. Remember who you are. And you fight back, damn it! Why? He's like, uh, did it? Did I do it? What happened? <laughs> So what happens if you just, your body rejects the Kryptonian presence altogether? We got him. I'll be back soon. Hurts you and I are gonna deal with Morgan Hatch. Mmm, team up. He's gone. For good. Kal -El. It's odd. So I guess that's what happens. If they burn the consciousness and it gets rejected, that consciousness is lost. Now go and complete what you were sent here to do. Or know that you are the sole reason Krypton was lost. Oh, hell yeah. What is he doing? He 
He, did he destroy the eradicator? Instead, I will bury you in the ashes of this world. <laughs> like what did what did he just do? Did he just say like fuck you dad? I'm done. Like what happened? Family time is sacred. And you guys are definitely due. He is Iron's man. Is that going to make him like a super Kryptonian? If he's got all their powers, all their memories. Is that what's going to happen? Like, um, mm. like at first I thought he was going to like just inject himself with everything, but then they had the explosion and whatnot and it just kind of dissipated. So what's that mean for him? Is he going to be able to break? Is he going to break out? I mean, obviously he's going to have to, right? If they want to continue where this is going, like I said before, there's three episodes to go after this. We're not done with him. He's locked up. He's hearing these whispers. Leslie Lars on the run. She could even be the, like, have, she could have been out, you know, staying back so she could quarterback, play the situation and see how things play out just in case something went wrong because we didn't see her at the uh at the fortress and we didn't see her after the fact um so like i would imagine like in case things went south for edge and his plan she'd be there to be the fallback go break him out of this uh wherever he's locked up at and probably get him out i don't know what all the consciousness are going to do within him it's kind of tragic like his character in a way like it's very like forced upon him like he doesn't seem like he's like he's got a genuine love for his family for his people but like it's being manipulated through by a person who has no interest in his well-being whatsoever it's all about the mission about preservation um and all that jazz so like it is there's is like a tragic air to his character because he wanted his people to be there he's wanted his people to survive to the point where he wanted to be brothers with Clark because he just wants that connection because he cares about his people. And now he literally is, at least all of the consciousnesses that were presiding in the Eradicator itself. They did, and we mentioned, <laughs> I was like, when they put Zod in there and they were, all right, here, General Zod, you're back. You get Clark's body kind of for a little bit until he shoves you out. Which is something I don't know if they've ever addressed in the continuity the world b lives and breathes in right now. Has Superman actually fought Zod before in this world? Because I would, because I would imagine so. In twenty years of being Superman, I would imagine Zod himself physically would have already showed up at one point or another. And I'm pretty sure that he's been mentioned before, but I can't I can't remember at this point. Um. But to have like that backup, that AI data, because that's what they establish these consciousnesses are just like screen like screenshots of like a memory, like the same way the same technology that was used to put Jor-El in the crystal that founded the Fortress of Solitude. It's the same thing as a snapshot of who they were while they were alive. So, I mean, it's not the real Zod, obviously. Um, so like. But that consciousness is forever lost once it goes into a body or it's injected into a body and then its host loses it or forces it out. And they did at least set up and establish that the body has to accept it. Otherwise, it'll be destroyed or they have to want to come back to reverse the eradication the process, though, it's very muddied on, like, humans because, obviously, if they reject it or if they have, like, a problem syncing up, it can kill them and destroy them, especially if they're not from Smallville. Being put into a Kryptonian host, I would imagine if there's a strong enough will, I can buy that they just force the consciousness out, push it out, and nothing happens to them physically beyond that. So it just fails to hold. You fight it long enough, it just doesn't stick and evaporates. So I think that's kind of what happened. I will say that the CGI in this episode was probably some of the weakest in the season so far, especially in the fight between John Henry and Superman, that fight in general. And I think it's because they wanted to do a lot of it practical with John Henry in the suit um, that they have built. It, it, it was a little janky. I'm not, I'm not even going to pretend it was definitely a little janky. Um, 
but them uh, coming together, I do like that we were playing to the heart of John Henry Irons in this, and I like that he finally heard those voices in the back of his head once he put everything together, and in the heat of the moment, like, talked to Clark, talked him down. I know a lot of people are not going to like that kind of thing, but I like it because it fits in with the tone of the characters. And I, I'm a hopeful person. I like shit like that. Like, when you can reach somebody's core and pull them out, it's just... It's that light in the darkness, and I always kind of like that thing. Given this situation, too, it was very psychological, so I think here it fits a little bit more um, than it might in other situations. Um, and then Diggle showing up, you know, them calling on Argus to get the material that they needed to build this rocket. I like that they tied them into that. Uh, General Lane called them in for assistance, though lying about what they needed it for. And I love the conflict between Argus and the DOD, between John and Sam Lane on the way he's handling these situations, the way he's playing them, like the way he was like, if you to if you were honest with us, there's no way in hell me and Lila would have done this. It's like, and you're giving up on Superman? I fought with this guy. Oliver's fought with this guy. We know this person. Are you, do you really want to risk losing him forever? Like if you're counting him out, I like their entire back and forth. And he didn't distract from the overall plot. It wasn't like hitting you over the head unnecessarily with it. It fit in this world why he was there. Um, which, and it honestly, it didn't even, it didn't play into his arc either at all. We didn't really see that except for his mentionings of, you know, space, uh, the green glowing green boxes, which of course is he's alluding to his green lantern ring because the last couple, he's been making pit stops over the, all the shows. His first appearance this year has been in Batwoman where he went to Gotham general to get a brain scan because he's hearing voices and having headaches. Um, as we know, last time we saw him before, which you guys might not have, if you're just coming into Superman and Lois at the end of arrow, he receives from the sky, a Green Lantern ring. We don't see the ring. We just see a block box crash. He opens this pod, takes out this gro uh, box that has and opens it to reveal like this green illuminating uh, light wash over his face. And that's his appearances throughout this season are supposed to kind of like deal with his acceptance of this power, of this responsibility. So we started off in Batwoman where he's in Gotham because he has an appointment with. Gotham General to do like a neuro scan of his brain for his headaches to see if there's anything physically wrong with him because at, at David Rand, he has rejected the call of the ring. In Flash's appearance, he's still having the headaches and they are increasing. He's now hearing voices saying, worlds await, worlds await every time he has one of these episodes. And he talks about a destiny that he has put off. He's not addressed. He's not tackled it. He's been putting off this entire time and he needs to go sort it out. Now, we didn't get any like any of that here. And I guess that was so this is still up in the air as to when after crisis this happens. And I did like that they mentioned like the doppelgangers, alternate earths and stuff like that. And now that this is post crisis, at least we know if John spreads the word, he can make the other teams aware that the multiverse is alive. Because as far as they all know, after crisis in an earth, they were the only Earth that was resurrected. They don't know that the multiverse came back as well. So that at least also confirms that he's not really the remnant of an alternate timeline or pre-crisis. He's not the remnant of a, a multiverse that dissipated. We still don't know how the portal opened to actually get him here, though. So there's some questions there still, which I wonder if we'll just not an get answers for them, if we'll just kind of brush it over for a while. We'll, we'll just have to keep playing that one by ear. I do hope that we get maybe a more classical kind of steel outfit in the future. If he does to kind of stick around as a character, that would be a lot of fun. Um, but I have to imagine by the end of these appearances, which I know a lot of you probably won't see, give or take, but like, uh, I can't, I, I really hope that at the end of it, we see John put the ring on. He's got one more appearance to make in his five appearance run because this was number four. Um, he made one on Legends, but it was as a different character. He played somebody in a different time frame. So it was just him playing a different person altogether. So we got one more appearance of him as Diggle. Uh, and I think that's going to be in Supergirl in their final season. So I'd imagine maybe he'll suit up there. I just hope we see him suit up at the end of it. Or maybe it'll set up maybe a future role in something else, another project they've got 
cooked up that we haven't heard about, or maybe even a guest appearance or something like that in the Green Lantern HBO show. You never know. It's all produced by Greg Berlanti and opens the door. And they did say that as far as main characters go, Jon Stewart, which is who Diggle is implied to be in this universe, um, isn't a main character that they're following in that show. And so, I don't know. I feel like there's something going on there, but we'll we'll just kind of play it by ear. I liked what they did in this episode. It was a little slow. It was a little bit of a calm before the storm, I think. And I keep it keeps feeling like that. I feel like we keep getting the calm before the storm. And we've yet to really have much of a storm. So, uh, I hope we come to blows. I hope they're holding their money for a good final fight with Morgan Edge in the end that satisfies because um, so far this, sh this show has been the peak as far as production, as far as writing, as for, far as uh, dramatic acting is concerned. I think the show has been killing it, slaying the game. Um, so they, I really hope they, they carry that through to the end and that we carry that into season two. Uh, but guys, what do you think of this episode? I'm not sure what else to say. So I'm going to pass it off to you guys. Sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Remember, guys, the full-length unedited reaction watch-along is available over on Patreon. Or if you sign up and, uh, as a membership here on YouTube as well, gets you access to the same content. Um, but guys, I want to shout out our patron legends, Bandy Sherrod, Ryan Carrot, and Jason Coleman. Thank you guys, as always, for your support. If you want to talk about this, Loki, Flash, whatever, come join our Discord. Links to then uh, all my socials are in the description of this video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I know it's been a little bit of a break, but we're picking back up and we'll pick back up again next week with the next episode of Superman and Lois. Take care, everybody.